Today we're gonna to make a traditional version of dukboki or spicy Korean rice cakes. Then I'm gonna show you the version that I actually make each week. It's a little bit of a healthier riff on it with a bunch of vegetables and lean meat added. And if you're like me, you're gonna make this dish once and then get a bunch of rice cakes to have on hand so you can make it all the time because of just how easy and versatile this dish is for a weeknight. Let's break it down. So dukboki or spicy Korean rice cakes have two special components. One is the rice cake, and then two is the chili paste sauce that the rice cakes are bathed in. And what makes the rice cake special is its texture. They are soft but chewy, and in my opinion, it's absolutely addictive. And as they cook down in the liquid, this is one of the things that helps get that sauce nice, thick, and creamy. Now, rice cakes are made from rice flour mixed with hot water. And as our pal Baba showed, you can definitely make them by hand. And I'll leave a link to Mong Chi's recipe if you want to try it. But I'm going to say about 99% of us are probably just going to buy some. So in that case, you can find these in the refrigerated section from an Asian grocery store in a number of different sizes and shapes, or you can just buy them online and these can actually just store in your pantry. Now, in general, I like to get a big bag of the ones that are refrigerated. I think these are much better texture, but I also do like to have a pack or two of the ones that I can keep in my pantry with the sauce just in case I run out of stuff to make on my own. Speaking of, that delicious sauce that coats our rice cakes is very, very simple. It's gochujang, gochugaru, and some sugar. The gochugaru, or red chili powder, and the sugar are used to control the spiciness and the sweetness, but the gochujang is really the star here. So gochujang is a savory, sweet, and spicy fermented red chili paste that's a very popular ingredient used all over in Korean cooking. This paste is made from gochugaru, glutinous rice, fermented soybean powder, barley malt powder, and salt, and can honestly be bought at most major grocery stores in the US now, but again, you can order it online as well. And this stuff keeps almost indefinitely in the fridge after you open it, so pick some up. And all we have to do with that is just mix it with the water or stock, which creates the liquid base for our dish, which is what those rice cakes cook in. Speaking of, let's go over the traditional version. So this recipe is from Mong Chi, and I've just made a couple of minor alterations in the stock and then adjusted the amounts to my preferences. So to start, set a pan over medium heat along with 700 grams of water and 20 grams of kombu or dried kelp and bring that to a simmer to cook it for about 10 minutes. Now, here's my alteration. Mong Chi makes her stock with kelp and dried anchovies, but I'm making mine with kombu and bonito flakes, which is what forms the classic dashi broth from Japanese cuisine. The kelp provides umami, and the dried fish flakes provide that smoky kind of fish flavor, which is going to give the dish more complexity than just water on its own. So after 10 minutes, take the pan off the heat and remove the kombu, then add in 5 grams of the bonito flakes and let that sit for 3 minutes. After 3 minutes, strain the stock off into a container, and I'm always amazed at how good dashi broth tastes on its own. There will be a video coming out at some point on dashi broth only. Oh my god, bro. So while the stock was simmering, I mixed 100 grams of the gochujang, 5 grams of gochugaru, and then 10 grams of sugar, and just mix that together until it's combined. Then you're going to return the dashi stock to a skillet and bring that to a simmer. Once it's simmering, add in the red pepper paste along with the rice cakes, and we're just going to cook this while stirring it occasionally for about 10 to 12 minutes. And during this time, the sauce is going to reduce and thicken up beautifully, and those rice cakes will really swell up and get chewy. Now, another common addition in Korea are boiled eggs and fish cakes, and you can just cook it down with the sauce. I'm not a big fan of these two additions personally, but feel free to add anything you want. So after 10 or 12 minutes, the sauce should have thickened up, and those rice cakes should be soft and make a clean bite through, but they are still chewy. So to serve the tteokbokki, all you have to do is set these onto a plate and top it with some green onions and black and white sesame seeds, and you have a delicious, delicious meal. Now, I'll devour this traditional version from time to time, but it is just pretty much empty carbs with a little bit of sauce. So what I like to do is add a ton of lean meat and vegetables to mine, and this is the version that I typically make on a weeknight. So first, set a skillet over medium-high heat, and then once that's hot, I'm just going to add in 350 grams, or about 3 quarters of a pound of 90-10 lean ground beef, along with a pinch of salt and a little bit of MSG. Then just use a wooden spoon or a potato masher and break that up until it's cooked through. 
Once the beef is cooked, just transfer that to a large bowl and set it aside. Now back at that same pan, add 15 grams of oil. And once that's hot, add a couple of smashed garlic cloves and some crushed up ginger. And you just wanna cook that up for about 30 seconds until it's fragrant. Next, toss in a whole pound of fresh asparagus that is chopped into pieces with a little pinch of salt. And we just wanna cook that up until we get some nice browning on the exterior. Once that's done, toss the asparagus into the same bowl with the beef. And now you just follow the package on the tteokbokki. So for me, this was 300 grams of water that I then mixed with the soup base, which is the seasoning paste and the vegetable mix, and then just brought that to a simmer. Once that simmered, toss in the washed rice cakes and cook to the desired thickness for about five or so minutes. Now, lastly, you just gotta dump the entire bowl of meat and veggies and coat everything together. Lastly, I just taste and adjust the seasoning as I see fit. Since we added a ton more volume to the rice cakes, I usually add a little bit more gochujang and maybe some water to help the sauce thicken up a little bit. And this is an easy way to extend two servings of rice cakes to four or even five. And this particular version clocks in at 405 calories and 22 grams of protein, which is pretty solid for me. So whether you go the traditional route or make a healthier version like I do each week, Dukboki has got to be in your weekly rotation. It's so delicious, so easy. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. The recipes for these will be up on my website if you guys want to follow along with exact measurements. But that's going to wrap it up for me in this one. Catch you in the next one. Peace, y'all.